Hello guys, this is Reza. Welcome to another video of FX series in Maya. In this video, we're going to talk about BOSS or Bifrost Ocean Simulation System in Maya. I may break down this topic into smaller chunks and talk about uh, different behaviors in separate videos because I tend to keep my videos short, maybe under 20 minutes or under 30 minutes, uh, possibly to introduce the technology and then we may have supporting videos to talk about um, additional effects or behavior that you may want to add to your liquid simulation. For starters, make sure to download a Bifrost extension for Maya from Autodesk website. I have the website here open and at the time of recording I have Maya 2020. This page may change but right now uh, the current version of extension is 2.0.5.1 once you install the plugin then you restart Maya and you go to Windows setting preferences plugin manager and make sure that boss.mll is uh, loaded and you can set this to auto load next time you run Maya it will come with this plugin next is to go to workspace and switch to Bifrost fluid and that brings up this drop down menu which is Bifrost Editor. All right, looks like we are set. So I'm just gonna close Bifrost Editor. I can bring it anytime I want. I go and create a poly plane. I'm going to increase its size to my grid size. Now quick thing about Bifrost measurement, although my scene scale is set to CM, my Bifrost system is going to calculate each grid as meter. So Right now, I may have 24 cm on my scene. The way Boss calculates it is 24 meter by 24 meter patch. Now I'm going to go to polyplane input and increase my subdivision to a very high value. And it is important to do that. You know, the higher the value, the crisper the texture would be. It is very high res and it will slow down your scene, but uh, it's a compromise you should be willing to, to make to get a, a much better result. Now, with that said, let's open Boss Editor. With the patch selected, I'm going to go and click on Spectral Wave Generation and it creates spectral wave for me. Um, I may have two passes for my wave. I'm actually going to call that Spectral primary and I may have another one um, as secondary waves. Now as soon as I create that then uh, if I play you can see I'm getting some textures on my grid. Fantastic starting point. But another thing happens if you look at the outliner all of a sudden my polyplane is invisible and we have a brand new geometry mesh input it's called boss output if i go to windows no editor and clean the graph bring this one in and look at the node tree you can see that it uses my original polyplane and it creates this spectral primary if I go to attribute editor and that's the heart and the brain of my simulation every time I want to tweak the behavior of the ocean that's where I go and then it creates the um, height calculator to create that output shape for me that's the external group node that it creates and a shading group to preserve any material that I assign to this uh, boss output shape node. So let's go in here, select our boss um, output shape and find spectral primary. By the way, this window, um, this wave solver uh, controls um, all wind driven waves on your water surface, which is a geometry here. And this one controls the colliders and influences, which we are not going to cover in this video. So I'm going to close that. And we have two key attributes. Um, one is patch size, the other one is resolution. Starting with frame, start frame, we always start at frame two because frame one 
is initial state, the actual patch, and only in frame two, Maya starts calculating everything, and that's what you will be rendering from frame two. Pad size is the dimension of your water surface. So the bigger this is, um, the probably milder or calmer the ocean would be to begin with, and then you need to intensify um, all the height attributes uh, to, to get a desirable look, but that's how you basically increase the size of your ocean. The next one is resolution. And this resolution calculates wave heights and, and controls the resolution of uh, all the um, cache files and EXR files that you're using to generate foam or to generate wave patterns. It's actually gonna be quite helpful if you're trying to project high resolution details into low poly mesh through displacement node. So that's a trick that you have to keep in mind that you can actually um, take the information from a high res and apply it to low res through displacement. But for now, we're just gonna work with high resolution and uh, we'll see what type of result we're getting. Then I'm going to lower down and get to wind attribute. So wind speed, if you're unsure about what sort of um, number you should put in since this attribute is physically accurate you can search for Beaufort wind chart or wind scale and that gives you a very clear picture on what type of value you should be using if you're looking for calm ocean whereas stormy a wild one the number will change and it's going to change the behavior of your ocean now for wind direction that's the guide that I go for based on Autodesk recommendation. So something to keep in mind. For now, I'm just gonna keep it at minus X. I'm gonna increase the wave a little. Wind fetch distance is fine. Again, it's the measurement and it's the way it's calculated is kilometers and it's the distance over in which the wind has been applied to the water surface. Now to get the I'm just going to select my polyplane and play again. Not too bad, I can see I have intensified the length of my uh, wave a little because the higher the wind speed value, the bigger the wave is going to be. Now I'm going to scroll up and in order to have um, horizontal as, as well as vertical uh, movements, I'm going to enable use horizontal displacement and increase this wave size to something like 3.5. Um, don't push this too high. I believe you can go up to seven, but then you see geo inner penetration and some artifacts, it may actually destroy your uh, patch. So use this with caution. I'm going to play and you can see I'm getting a much crisper result. I may actually push this to 3.8 and see what I'm getting. Yeah, not too bad. Again, uh, just look at the water surface carefully and make sure there is no artifact. I see a little bit of artifact here, but that shouldn't be a, a big deal. Now, um, I'm all set. Let's create our secondary waves. So you can see around these areas, the water surface is way too soft. And if you see your reference, the, the between each wave, you have a little bit of noise pattern. So I'm gonna to go to boss editor and with the surface selected, I'm gonna create another set of uh, spectral waveform. And this one is going to be secondary. I don't need to do much about this if I play now you can see I have a little bit of noise here and there. And um, this red button means that I haven't cached any of them. And that may, you may experience some, some slowness in the scene. Not everything is super high. You can see that I've enabled actually frame rate and it's fairly, fairly slow right now. Okay, things are looking good. Uh, now it's time to uh, give this a material. I'm just going to right click on it go to assign new material i am going to give this a ai standard surface and from preset i'm going to give this deep water done i am going to click 
on this button so I don't see any textures or opacity because I still want to keep an eye on the textures and the way the water behaves but um, that should do it for the majority part now let's uh, go and have a sky dome I already have a sky dome put together a camera and angle it properly and if I play a few frames and now render I should be getting my water surface nice my only criticism uh, and my only comment on that is it's just way too clean and there's no foam on it now the way that foam works in boss is quite peculiar in my opinion uh, it's not procedurally generated everything is textures so in application packages like Houdini we have uh, white water and everything is the actual geometry but in here if I go to boss spectral wave you can actually enable form foam and I can re-render but I'm not going to see anything because in order to see foam you need to cache it as an image and feed it back to your AI standard so let's do that before I do that I've noticed from experience that this cusp minimum is way too high so if I cache this with cusp minimum to set to point 0.1 all I'm getting is pretty much foam so I'm going to reduce this number way down to something like 0 0.025 and only then I'll be bringing the boss editor and I go cache all so make sure to set your project first and then when you cache all the cache files can be found um, in your cache folder All right, now we see that that floppy disk icon for both spectral wave nodes are um, it is green, meaning that cache has been written successfully. If I go to my project directory and look at my um, boss cache folder, you can see that everything's been written properly. Two folders, one is primary the other one is secondary for primary we have the actual movement as vector displacement and if I scroll down I have another set of renders in EXR for my foam generation so where does this foam go to if I go to um, material attribute and into emission tab that goes into weight Going to create a file and I'm going to call my foam which starts from frame 2 open and I make sure that I use image sequence let's start again if I stop and render now now I can see that I have foam as textures has been added to my uh, water surface now I can just uh, give this a proper render and we'll add a sky dome in nuke so stay tuned I'm just going to render the whole 120 frames or maybe 200 frames uh, I already have my sky dome in the scene so and that's where the reflection is coming from so make sure to do that as well I'm going to render it all and show you the end result in a second all right that is the final look I have a defocus node which um, only blurs this bit on the top of the screen I have a default grade node and the right node nothing too specific um, apart from that it's fairly straightforward 
If I double click on the grade node, you can see I have a little bit of multiply and gay to really pop the white points of the image. But apart from that, um, that's that's pretty much everything as rendered. Um, and this is the final result. Here's the final look. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and subscribe to receive more videos on different topics. Um, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.